another segment of On The Mat. Guru Billy Brown here. Today uh, we're going to bring you something very special, we think. Uh, we're going to bring you a video that will be entitled Kicks for Downs. What I mean by that is we're going to teach you how to develop your kicking to a point where you can drop your opponents uh, very efficiently uh, with, with the kicking. Um, kicking originated with me very at the start of my martial arts career. My, my father uh, started me kicking when I was around three years old, my mother tells me. I have memories starting around five or six. Uh, some of the fondest memories I have of my dad is, is uh, us being outside and him making me kick an oak tree or him holding cardboard up for me. Uh, he used to always say, always kick with your cowboy boots all of a sudden. So, uh, so I've really been kicking. This, this, this has really been a, a, a learning uh, development with me for the last 30 years of my martial arts career. So uh, we're going to teach you not only the drills, how to set these kicks up with your opponent, whether you be on the ring, in the cage, as well as on the street. But we're also going to show you some awesome demonstrations of what kicking can really do once you train it. Uh, we feel here that kicking is the most underrated area of today's martial artists. It, it really is. And not only that, not only do people not train them, people don't know how to teach them anymore. It's really a lost art. Uh, so we hope to change that. Uh, the UFC has helped that, really, because the, uh, the, the fighters lately have been lending these kicks because some of these guys are starting to train these things again. And they've been pulling them off with success and dropping their opponents. Uh, I started getting lots of uh, email, lots of messages on, on uh, Facebook and stuff with people saying, look, I want you to teach us how to kick like this. Uh, so we hope you enjoy this. Uh, we have a lot planned for you. This is also going to be a free video to the public. So, uh, so you guys get all you can from it. Uh, you guys know that I do private lessons. So once you see this video and you really want to learn this, not only do we have great group classes here at Progressive, but, uh, but I do private lessons all week long. So if you guys really want to make kicking uh, uh, another, another piece of your arsenal, uh, give me a call. Okay, guys, as we get down to the training portion of the uh, video, uh, our kicking system is a blend of arts. Um, uh, it's a blend of different arts that I've trained over the last uh, 30 years of my martial arts career. Uh, we're going to be incorporating, uh, of course, uh, elements of Muay Thai uh, uh, kickboxing, but also you're going to find uh, Taekwondo. I spent many years in Taekwondo. And, uh, I was very fortunate to, to start Taekwondo uh, with people who really wanted to learn how to fight with their feet and not score points. Um, so I was very lucky for that. I want to I contribute uh, a lot of my kicking skill uh, as, and really a lot of my training mythology uh, yeah, to, to Master Brad Whitla. Uh, I've been with him for 20 years now, and, uh, and I think that he has really refined my kicking and, and really opened my mind up to the avenues of what what good kicking can do. So we have the Muay Thai kickboxing, we have the, the Taekwondo. Uh, I've also studied Sabat for the last 12 years, so you're going to see elements of that, um, as well as Filipino elements uh, from, let's say, Pan and Jockman, arts that you've probably never even heard of. Um, so, so we're really a blend of things. That's why I call my program hybrid kickboxing or hybrid Muay Thai kickboxing. So, um, so I think you guys are going to like the blend. I think you guys are going to find some new ways to train your kicking. And, uh, and we're going to develop powerful, fast kicking. You're going to see the, w the way that I've actually uh, maybe even discarded elements of different arts that I didn't like much to make their, their, their way of kicking even more effective, the way we feel. Um, and, and, and add it too. Uh, you know, Bruce Lee said it, said it great. He said, uh, he said that you must uh, discard what is useless, add what is useful, and then add what is a... Uh, essentially your own. So I really, really, really believe that that's the way, uh, the way a, a modern-day, open-minded martial artist should train. So let's get to it. Okay, guys, let's get to it. Today, uh, assisting me, uh, we have Mr. Jay Bumpus. Uh, we always love uh, having Mr. Jay here. Jay has been with me for three years now. He's in my instructor program. Uh, and we, we just love being on Mr. Jay in his videos. Um, uh, this, this video, Obviously, there's going to be a lot more to our kicking system than, than what you're going to see in this video. Um, but since this is entitled Kicks for Downs, we're going to show you some ways to set your kicks up to drop people, whether it be a knockout or a flash knockout or just so they, so they take a knee. Um, we're going to use the first technique is going to be the knee. The knee is not necessarily a great technique to knock people out, uh, although I have dropped people with it. I have dropped people with it on the street, in fact. Um, but the knee is really good for setting your kicks up. If you get close to uh, clinch range, uh, I'm going to show you how to land your knee to, 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 to create space so that you're, you, you can set your kicks up uh, very efficiently. Uh, the first kick we're going to talk about is the Muay Thai round kick. 
Uh, we're going to show you how we train it to get power, how we train it to get speed. Then we're going to show you some setups that you can uh, you, you can pull this thing off. Then we're going to show you a kick uh, called the uh, spin side kick. I feel that the spin side kick, as far as a body kick goes, is one of the uh, greatest things you can throw. It's also one of the least trained. Very few people know how to throw it effectively, uh, so they don't throw it. Um, the, it, it, the impact with this thing, uh, when you land it good, they're going to they're going to they're going to fall. Bottom line. So we're going to show you how to set up the, the, the spin side kick. Then the last kick we're going to do uh, is uh, the kick that I've dropped people with for the last 15 years, probably. Uh, uh, it's a spin hill kick. I consider it a sledgehammer. Um, it, it's very powerful, and it's the kick you've been seeing in a lot of UFC fights uh, lately. Uh, the fight with Victor Bel Belford being the uh, most recent. Um, it's very powerful when you learn to throw it and you learn to throw it with confidence and you land with it uh, it has a very very ballistic effect uh, and it's a fun kick to learn to throw so those are the, the four techniques we're going to talk about the knee how to set the knee up to set up for your kicks uh, we're going to talk about the Muay Thai round kick the uh, spin side kick and the spin heel kick so let's get to it okay um we should also talk about stretching. Uh, this is not a stretching video. We do plan to come up with uh, t to, to film for you some stretching videos in the near future. But, uh, but we will touch on some. Over the years, I found that before I kick, I found that ballistic stretching is the best way to go. Um, and I'm going to show you some, some stretching that I like to do before, uh, before I kick. Now, you can do these without a partner. Uh, you can also, if you have a partner that you're fixing to train with, you can do it with him. What I like to do is just have your partner stick his hand out. And the first kick, I'm, the first stretch I'm going to do, it's not really a combative kick, uh, for example, but it is a great stretch to warm your hips up, to get the blood pumping in your legs. Um, I'm just going to put my hands up and start, start kind of slow and low with this till your, till your legs get, get more flexible. Uh, in Taekwondo, we call this a crescent kick. We're going to go inside and outside with it. So you're just going to relax. I want you on the balls of your feet, okay? And I just want you to kick. I want you to touch, stretch. Stretch, breathe. We can go inside with it. We can go back outside with it. I usually do that for about two minutes, both legs, uh, inside and outside, and it's really a great stretch. Okay, the next stretch that I like to do right before I kick is what we call a leg lift. Very similar to the, uh, the, the crescent kicks, except it's a very straight motion. We're just going to get in our stance. Same thing, our, uh, we're going to be on the balls of our feet. We're going to leg lift straight up, breathe, that's called the leg lift. You can also just work a different angle. When your foot gets to the top, I want you to curve it out. We call this a twist kick, uh, but it's also a great warm up. Uh, we usually do both legs in about two minutes, two to three minutes. Okay, we're going to uh, start with the Muay Thai round kick. Uh, obviously, tie pads are a great uh, tool for this, but also I love the kicking shield. Uh, it tends to kind of con uh, contour your body uh, a little, a little more, uh, and it's a little more. I love the tie pads, but this thing you can actually set up a lot more drills with it than you can the tie pads, and we'll show some of those, especially when you start kicking for power in combinations. Uh, but we're going to start, I'm going to show you my warm-up uh, before I warm up with the uh, Muay Thai round kick. Um, and I think you guys will like the different uh, approaches to your uh, drilling with the kicks. Okay, so continuing on with the uh, Muay Thai round kick. Uh, right now, we're still kind of warming up our legs. Um, we're, we're not doing any uh, tactical combative elements with it yet. We're not showing you how to set these things up. We're just learning to properly execute the kick. So first, we're going to use the tie pads. Okay. Now, when you use tie pads, I just want you to relax and kind of put your elbows down. You don't want to put your, your arms in front of your face when you start hitting yourself. You just kind of relax with it. When I kick, he breathes and kind of leans into it a little bit. So, right now, we're just warming up. I want you to get in your stance. I want you to keep your knees bent. Um, uh, we, we're, we're on our tippy toes. Okay? And I just want you to step to get momentum slightly. As you do, your hip goes forward. And I just want you to slim your shin into the pads. And then we act like we're a, uh, a batter, getting, just warming up before the plate. That's all he's doing. He's getting proper technique, getting his blood flowing uh, in his arms. We're doing it in our legs. So I'm going to show you a few of these. So I just want you to do those both legs. Do them 
20 times each. And, I, and I'm telling you, your legs will really be, uh, uh, your blood flow will be pumping and you'll get more loose. Okay, still showing you some ways that we train the, uh, the, the, the turning roll kick or the Muay Thai roll kick. Uh, the shield, as I said before, is a great tool. Uh, we love using the shield here. Uh, you don't see as many uh, Muay Thai uh, practitioners use the shield, but I think it's really great, uh, and I think you can do a lot. This time I'm going to do a few kicks, uh, and we're going to move some. Uh, he's going to circle with me. He's going to flare the shield out. I slam the kick, and we move. So you can really make some great drills with this. Another one that we like to do is I'm going to throw the lead hand uh, jab to his face. And as soon as I do, I'm going to throw the kick right underneath the jab. Very similar thing, we're just going to step double jab cross, you see? So it goes, see? Now from here, I'm going to just step back in, cross hook cross, and then two kicks, see? If your foot is facing this way when you kick, where's the, where's the power arc at? Straight ahead, there's none. The power arc needs to be here. You want him to feel this kick here. Does that make sense? So when I do this step, it's, sometimes you'll hear it called a penetrate step because we through the target. Does that make sense? Sure. So when I'm here, I step to get momentum. Very, very fundamentally, this is how it looks. One, two. See it? Not dynamic, but that's how it looks. So I step to get momentum. Now on the when it hits, shoot bone. On the way back, I bend it slightly, I put it down. Does that make sense? Sure. Great uh, uh, piece of equipment to use for your uh, turning rope kick, your Muay Thai kicks, especially when you're practicing uh, head, head kicks. Is the clapper pad. Uh, we borrowed this from Taekwondo also. Great tool. Um, just because you're in a certain discipline doesn't mean that you cannot borrow uh, training methods from other disciplines. Uh, remember that. So uh, this, this shot, now we're going to work on some head kicks. Um, since this is entitled Kicks for Dells, we're showing you how to drop people. When it comes to, to, to dropping people, I prefer leg kicks or head kicks. Body kicks are just too, uh, the, the chance of him catching your kick is just too great. Um, plus, you're going to have a much more ballistic effect uh, hitting the head or hitting the legs. Um, so we train the Muay Thai kick to the body, on the shields, on the tie pads, to get the uh, mechanics down. But when we actually get to the, the, the uh, actual uh, combative portion or the actual dropping him, portion of it. We like to, to, to do head kicks or, uh, or leg kicks. So we're going to show both of those. Um, now a lot of Thai, uh, uh, the, the, the Muay Thai uh, way of kicking, they usually like to kick the neck area, uh, which is great. And they like to kick it at a slight angle, which is great, and we're going to show that. But in reality, any hard kick you put on his face, whether it, I, I usually like to tell people from the ears to the jaw, all this is good meat. Any hard kick you put is going to uh, have a ballistic effect, and uh, the chance of dropping him is going to be great. Uh, when we get down to the spin hill portion of the kick, uh, I have a great story to tell you about an MMA fighter that I was uh, training, and uh, he was a big boy, and uh, I was the only one that could, that was in close to his weight, and I, I ended up dropping him with a, hitting him with a spin kick that was in a place you would never think would drop him, and it knocked him out in, uh, for five minutes. So we'll, when we get to that kick, we'll, we will talk about that. But all meat is good meat. So we'll show you how we train uh, the Muay Thai head kick. <clears throat> He's just going to hold the pad. Once again, you want to put your hands up. You want to be uh, duck feet, tippy toe, balls on your feet. And we're just going to kick and we're going to go through it. We're going to go around. I'm going to do a few of these. Uh, see how it comes out. Okay. 
Okay, once you start playing around with these uh, different pieces of equipment, you'll you'll invent your own drills. And, and like I said, that we because of the uh, the uh, lack of time, and this is going to be a public training video, so I'll, this is just going to be uh, almost a teaser for you guys. But I am going to show you some more ways you can uh, incorporate the clapper pad into your uh, uh, Muay Thai round kick uh, training uh, uh, arsenal here. So, uh, from here, he's just going to keep the, the, the clapper to his chest. We're going to circle. We're going to stay in our proper uh, stance. Heads are up, jaw down, eyes up. And then, whenever he wants, he's going to flare the pad. That's when you do the uh, training round kick. I, I call these green light drills. You see the green light, you go. Okay, so we'll see how this works out. Have fun. Okay, uh, we're going to show you a few of the uh, training drills that we do with partners on setting this thing up. Uh, you got to work in control at this point, obviously. Uh, his head is going to be the pad, so so you really don't want to do that, or you'll lose uh, training partners pretty quick. Um, kicking. When you think about kicking, the only purpose of kicking should be to set up your punches, to set up your strikes, and the only purpose of punching should be to set up your kicks. And we'll talk more about that uh, that 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 train of thought as the uh, video goes on. Um, so the first drill that I like to do to set up the head kick. This is before we get down to the leg kick. Obviously, the leg kick requires a little less, uh, uh, I don't know, a little less motor skill than the head kick, but still very, uh, very, uh, very difficult to do effectively, and we'll talk about that. So, the first one that we're going to do, he's going to throw the thigh round kick to my leg, okay? All I'm going to do is check that with a shin sit shield, very, very basic uh, way to check the leg kick. Then I'm going to throw a high uh, turning uh, Muay Thai round kick to his head. So that's one way to kind of train to get the uh, the uh, the kick in. So if he gets back over here, so now he's going to do the, a switch kick and kick uh, and kick that part of my body, and I'm going to do the shield here. And as soon as I do, I just throw the head kick. Very basic here. And throw the head kick. So that's another way to train. Very good drill. You put on shin pads. You can really work with power and force. Okay, uh, going in uh, more depth with the, uh, the turning round kick or the one-tower round kick. Uh, we love the clinch, we are the plumb, uh, especially for a street fight. Uh, we love that position. Obviously, that's going to be a, uh, another video. Uh, but right now, we're going to show you how to get to the plumb. We're going to use that knee we were talking about to uh, as a great opener, a great space getter to uh, create some space. Maybe, luckily, if it's sport, get a cut. Street two, get a cut, because blood is good. Uh, and then we're going to learn uh, land the uh, the Muay Thai head kick. So <clears throat> from here, he's going to put his hands up. All I want you to do is is stuff his fist like this. This is just a uh, a, a good way just to come in quick and and, and, and get the and, and get the the plumb position. You okay there? Okay. So um, from here, we're going to go one, okay? and then I run the knee forward, and I just want you to do the plumb uh, position from here. Hips out, uh, tippy toe. From here, I want you to knee once, okay? And then I want you just to rip this guy violently as you turn your hip here, and then there's the head kick. Okay, now, obviously, we're having to stay within uh, the, 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 the camera uh, angle here, um, but, but just so you get the idea of what I'm trying to bring to you. So the hands are up. I go one, I knee, and I clench, I knee, and then I rip his body here, and I get the head kick. He would move a little more with the rip. Uh, I don't want to throw him out of your, your uh, viewing angle there. Okay, uh, we'll show a different angle. Okay, so hands are up. I go one and I knee straight and I plumb. See, I knee from there. I rip this guy forward and that goes right into the head kick. Okay, another variable. He can actually start throwing punches, so jab, cross, Hook. Now look, I can jam this gun here if I want to. 
right? You see that just clench right against his body from here. And as soon as you do, you're right there for the clinch. You may as well pop the elbow from here. I plumb, I clinch, and I look, I can always just turn the head over and just throw the knee to the uh, head area. A uh, good chance of getting a cut there. Uh, like I told you before, uh, uh, brief history of, uh, of, of me as I, I've been a boxer for the last 16 years. I just retired this year. I mean, I've actually pulled off the head knee uh, more than once. So it's a very valid technique, especially once you get the palm, you can turn the head, and it's very easy to get it, okay? So keep in mind, that's there. So to set up the round kick, though, we go one, two, I can always jam this if I want to, or go directly for the clinch from here, okay? Run the knee from there, see? Now as I turn him, I can throw the knee to the face. Obviously, that's there, as we talked about. I can also just rip him. Just rip him for the head kick. Okay, talking about the leg kick now. Uh, once again, I, I love to use the kicking shield uh, for the leg kick. Uh, there's also a, a thick leather one that a lot of the Thai, uh, the Thai players use a lot uh, that works beautifully for this. We used to have one, but over the years it tore up, and I just haven't, uh, haven't ordered us a new one yet. Uh, but kicking shields work great. Uh, has his handle on the top. So he's going to step forward with his left leg. Yeah, he's just going to hold the shield to the thigh. Now, in a second, I'm going to break down the spots that we like to hit. But right now, let's just learn the mechanics of the kick. Uh, what I like to do is when I go in, I want to slightly turn the kick down, and I want to bring it right back to my stance. I want to do a few, uh, and, and we'll see how it works. how we uh few drills you can use to set this leg kick up now it's not always the sciatic area that we kick you hear that a lot kick the sciatic uh i have four spots on the leg that i love to kick number one is right where the muscle kind of ends here okay that's a great spot common peroneal area um it, it's a it's a great spot and sometimes it's a little more uh open than the sciatic area okay uh, number two, where your fingertips in. Right kind of in this indention of the thigh area where your finger, fingertips in. It's a shot that needs to be delivered straight through and very hard to get past the muscle, but once you do, it's a dead leg. It, it, uh, it's sort of equivalent to when you were in uh, high school and somebody would knee you and you would fall. That's the spot that we really love to kick. The next one is right kind of in between the calf muscle. Great shot, takes them off their feet, great shot for drops. And then of course the sciatic area, which is uh, which runs down all the way, about this area without getting too much scientific on you here, it runs all the way down here. Great shot to get to it, a little harder really usually to get to it. So a couple drills, we'll do the sciatic first. Uh, the, the first one what I like to do is when he throws the jab, I'm just gonna step out to the side and that shot is already there to the back of the leg of the sciatic area. Great shot to do. Once you develop power, once you develop footwork, you can land it a lot. Okay? Now, for the front of the knee, the one I prefer, he throws the jab cross, and I just slip it. We, once you get this mechanics, it's already there anyway, and you'll get by the punch. Great slip area. But it also sets up the front of the knee shot pretty effectively. And once you learn the mechanics where you, you're swinging your, your arm anyway, it, it makes us a great deflection for this cross. So it goes one, two, and I just hammer it right down on the leg without trying to kill him too much. Hammer it right down on the leg. Hammer it right down on the leg. How does that feel? Tell the camera. Ow. <laughs> okay. So it's a great, great shot uh, to get. You blast it, he will, he will fall. Okay. Um, also. Uh, coming in from the, the other side again, he throws a jab, I sidestep this, great knee spike, okay? Great knee spike is there if you're in kind of knee range. And once you knee, it's beautiful to set up the head 
kick once again. Okay? Once you get the footwork where he throws the jab, and if you're too close to really land a good kick or you feel a little too jammed, the knee sets up fine, and then you can get the head kick once again. Sets it up perfectly. There are a thousand ways to set these things up for the leg kicks. Um, so just play with it and have fun. Another thing that I like to do a lot with the uh, rugby that a lot of people neglect is actually kicking from the clinch area or the plum position. Okay? So once we do our same motion that we did earlier, once we get that weight on the front leg, all I'm going to do is stiff leg this thing and yuck. Okay? And it's very, very, it's a very, very sneaky, very ballistic kick, and it just kills the leg. So if he would grab a shield, good way to train it from here. He's just going to hold it. Okay? I'm going to come in and I'm going to clinch. Okay? And I just want you to get him in clinch range. Now when you kick, the kick comes and it rolls and then it, it kind of reverberates right back down to your stance. Push! 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 So that's kicking from clinch position. Very effective, very sneaky. Okay, the next kick we're going to move into is the spin side kick. Uh, in my career, I've dropped a lot of guys with this kick. Um, a, a funny story, I was invited to uh, train at a, a, a Type 1 O school many, many years ago. And uh, uh, the instructor invited me to come train with him. Uh, and I've been known the instructor for a long time. And I went on there and trained with him. And uh, some, uh, we were doing adjustment side kicks. And a guy held a, what they call a blast master. It's a big, thick pad about that thick with airports. And when you kick it, it shoots the air out. It's really for heavy kickers. And about the fourth kick, I cracked his rib. Through the Blastmaster. He dropped a knee, uh, uh, cracked his rib. It was funny, many, many years ago, I ended up running into this guy. Many years ago, a decade later. And I said, Hey, I'm Billy Brown. You remember me? He goes, Oh, yeah, you broke my ribs about a decade ago. So it was, it was really a funny story on, on the ballistic nature of the Spit Psychic, what you trade it. Uh, it's very powerful, in my opinion. It's one of the most ballistic body kicks you can do. In fact, it's the only kick that I like to do and feel safe doing to the body. Whereas earlier I said when you do the tie around kick, it has a chance of getting caught. And obviously there, there are things you can do once that kick gets caught. But, uh, but I'd rather just spin side kick the body. Uh, the problem with spins is that nobody trends them anymore. People don't understand that it's the opposite of a turn. They love to do the turns. People go, spin kicks leave you vulnerable. So the turns. So it's not about that. It's about the way you train it. Because the way you train is the way you play. Now, the people that are training these things today, these, uh, these MMA fighters, Victor Belfort, for example, he's training these, kick these kicks, and his, the older he gets, the better he looks because his arsenal is getting more diverse because he's adding the kicking to it. Okay? Now, one of the things that separate my kicking from many, uh, and, and I usually ask my students, uh, or when I do seminars, I usually uh, pose a question to everybody. I usually say, what's more powerful, a jump kick or a kick where you stay on the ground? Well, usually everybody says jump kick. That's usually the way of thinking. Go to a Taekwondo 1 school, ask some of the students, what's more powerful? Jump kick, because it looks better. But in reality, that's not true. If you, if you put science behind it, it's just not true. A kick that stays on the ground is more powerful because you're actually pushing off of the earth to add, uh, to add momentum, to add uh, force to this kick. So a kick that's on the ground, and when you see us do demonstrations, we like to jump, and we jump eight foot in the air. Well, it used to be eight foot. As I get older, I don't quite get that anymore. Um, but, but you see that in demonstrations, but in reality, if you were to pull this leg off in the ring, cage, or on the street, you'd want to kick where you're on the ground. Now, this is where it gets tricky. What's faster, a jump kick or a kick that's on the ground? Well, the answer to that is a jump kick. Because the same thing that makes a ground kick so powerful is what makes it slower. The friction makes it slower. A jump kick is faster because you're alleviating the friction. You're in the air. It's almost like a car that's driving on ice and a car that's on a, on a track. That's the difference. So let's blend the two. So essentially, every kick I do is a jump kick. Every kick. I don't know if you guys were, were watching... Go back and watch some of the Tyrone kicks. It's a jump kick, but I only jump that much. And by the time I make impact, my feet are planted. So I'm going to demonstrate the spin side kick to you guys, show you the power of this, and then we'll, uh, we'll put this together in some drills for you. Okay. okay, once again, we're going to go to the kicking shields. 
Uh, you do not want to train this kick with uh, tie pads. Uh, if you do, uh, your partner will hate your guns. We've tried it. So uh, I'm going to double up on Jay here just uh, just because I uh, I don't want to injure him. He, he does have to work uh, later on. Um, now you can also put a smaller pad behind uh, to kind of protect the rib area. Okay. All I want you to do is get in your stance. Same same way. Now I'm going to do a few full speed so you can get the dynamic of it. And then we're going to break this thing down for you. So same motion you get in your stance. And I just want you to spin and kick. Okay, now I want you to throw a jab and spin right underneath the jab. Okay, breaking this thing down. What we do, the hop is what alleviates the friction. So when I hop, essentially it's here. And by the time that my feet hit the ground, the kick should be landed. Okay, um, that's what adds. It didn't, I want you to uh, envision yourself pushing off of the floor once you do that. So if, if the camera looks at my feet, the hop once I do it, I'm trying to do it slow for you. The, once it lands, it's, it's planted again. Now when you add that with ballistic uh, uh, intention, it adds a very, very devastating kick. Okay. That I teach kicking is that we like to throw spins off of turns. This is how most people do that. They kick, and then there's the spin. It's beautiful. It works. I use it. This one's a little more, I think, discreet. So when I kick, it's already there. The kick's got to go back in the direction anyway. So I, so I use that. So I use, it's already going, so I, I call it a touch and go. I don't blink. I do that in really so, so I touch and go with it. Does that make sense? Do it slower. Do it slower. Touch. All right, here we go. Okay, so he was to drop the shields. All meat is good meat. You land this, it's going to break rib. But I love landing it when he's throwing a shot. Because it exposes the liver. If he's a right lead fighter, beautiful, even better. But if he throws the, uh, the punch, or even the tie kick, it's a beautiful shot because it exposes the liver. Now where I like to hit, face the camera, right underneath the pec area, is where the liver starts. I mean, obviously it wraps around. Where this isn't a science video for you. We'll get into more depth in other videos. But as he goes, I like to hit right into that. And it's a very devastating blow. And you want to use the heel of your foot, not the flat foot, not the knife is like the karate guy says. The heel. Because the heel is like the tip of a pen, of an ink pen going through your hand. You can do that all day long. You, can't, you, you, you don't want to do that at all. But if you flip the pen around, you can do that all day long. But if you flip the tip of that pin, boy, that's one shot and you don't want to do it again. So, a couple ways that I like to train this thing. I may step in and do a leg kick and he may jab, he may jab, cross, and then there's the kick right off. Okay, working on control here. This is good for your partner. If you have control, you have power. A lot of people, let's switch arts a little bit, go to JKD, Jeet Kune Do trading methods, for example. We do a lot of trapping in that. And I see a lot of tr uh, a lot of uh, train of thought saying, you want to punch like this, don't even block. You want to always go through because that works on penetration. Well, what's going to happen, the more you train this, that's what you're going to do in a fight. You're going to go right past his face. Who's going to penetrate with a punch that much? All you need is an inch of penetration to really do damage. I would so much rather just touch his whiskers. Barely. Just touch his mustache. Because I know that if I was to add an inch to that, it would be devastating. That's the training method that I want you to look at when you punches and kicks. If you've got control, and you can just touch, or you can just kick, and you can barely touch, that's what I want. Because all you got to do is add juice to that. And then when you get into the hitting the, the pads, hitting the mitts, uh, sparring, then you can work on turning that gauge up a little bit. Okay? So with the Smith sidekick, 
uh, as I said, even cop change. He goes to Jab Cross. I'm going to just parry this thing over, and the spin is right there exposing the little area. Okay. The times we kick. Kicking requires more motor skill than punching does. So as I said before, kicking leads into your punching, and punching leads into your kicking. These are the times we kick. Number one, in combination with our punching. So if I was to go jab, cross, hook, there's the spin because it hit it in combination with your strikes. Number two, in the midst of what he's doing because the kick is hidden in his thought process. If he's punching me or kicking me, that's when I hit him midstream. That's when I kick him because that hides uh, the, the motor skill. Okay? So as he's moving, that's when we hit. And number three, as he's backing up. Now you may need to put your tools in to get him backing up, or he may be doing it with footwork. You may come in for a clinch. Boom, you break the clinch. That's a perfect time to launch your kick. So those are the times that you want to work on kicking. You don't just kick arbitrarily. You don't just stand here and hope that you spin. That's when you're going to get countered. That's when you're going to get uh, double leg. That's when you're going to get body tackled. That's when you're going to get uh, hit. You set your kicking up. You set it up in the midst of your combinations. You set it up in the midst of his combinations. His force is coming. He's thinking about hitting you. Boom! That's when he gets hit. Or you set it up as you got him on his heels, moving backwards. You get a man on his heels, he, he loses combative uh, structure. That's when you set your kicks up. The spin side kick. Okay, the spin heel kick, uh, as I said before, is the only kick that I uh, recommend that you train accuracy first, not power. Because, yes, spinning does leave you very open for counterattacks. So you have to be able to zero that thing in under pressure, the drop of a dime. Okay? Um, when, I, when my father died when I was 11 years old, I was very distraught, obviously. My father was my first martial art instructor, and he... he uh, he gave me this wonderful gift of martial arts since I was three years old. Well, my mom knew to make me happy. She says, well, we got to find a good martial arts school for you. So she let me pick it out of the phone book. This was probably 19... This was probably around 1989. 88 or 89. And... So this next, this next demonstration I'm going to show you, I actually got from uh, a, a, a Taekwondo master by the name of uh, Bob Hardy. Uh, he called it kicking the habit. And uh, he's kind of handed this down to his students and uh, everybody that comes under him, we kind of all do it now. Uh, it's for you smokers out there that are trying to quit. This is a very good way to quit. Okay, uh, Mr. J puts his cigarette in his mouth. I know he hates that. Okay, uh, So he's going to scoot back. Now I want you to throw the spin hill kick and you're just going to try to uh, get the cigarette. Now, don't start with something else first before you just say, hey, hold this cigarette and try to kick it. But once you learn to do this, uh, it really, really works with accuracy. Uh, obviously, we don't use cigarettes every time. Pin tops are great. You can stick the tip of the pin top, or you can just have a guy hold the pin top. Wonderful drill to really zero in uh, your spin hill kicks. Uh, great party favor also. So, I'm going to try to do this for you. The spin hill kick. Okay, once you get really, really comfortable with the spin hill kick, oh, and your partner has to be really, really comfortable with you. You can try the same thing blindfolded. Once the body knows it, the eyes shouldn't need to be there. All right, we'll attempt this, Mr. J. Touched it. Yes. I'm going to show you a secret 
of how we've been getting people off of cigarettes for decades now, okay? Uh, this will really allow you to kick that habit quickly, okay? So uh, these two smokers here, as you can see, they don't look very happy here. They're smokers. We've got to kick that habit, okay? All right. Can you show your ice cream, please? No. Uh, okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Uh, really? Can I have some? Uh, what? <sighs> Happy. The spinning heel kick. A very devastating kick, very sneaky kick. Uh, once you train it, uh, you, you'll have great success with it. Uh, the story that I mentioned earlier in this, uh, in this video, um, I was training at one of my fighters, uh, uh, his name was Kenny. Kenny's no longer, no longer with us, he passed away uh, about a year ago. Um, I was training Kenny, and Kenny was about six foot four, 250, 260. Uh, very, very strong individual. Um, so I was the only one that was close to his weight uh, class, so I was the one having to, to, to spar with him. Um, well, we were sparring one night, and I, I, uh, I countered one of his, uh, uh, I think he, uh, he, he, I think I, I shielded a leg kick, and I spun on him, and I kicked him right here. Now, you remember what I said earlier, anything, the ears pass, all meat is good meat. I hit him right here. You don't think of that as being a spot that's really conducive to dropping somebody. Uh, it knocked him out for five minutes. Um, it, it, he said that uh, he felt like a hammer hitting, then he didn't feel anything. Was his uh, was his uh, words when he woke up? Um, so the spin heel kick is very uh, it's very sneaky, very powerful. Um, I have one colleague. Uh, he's been in the Taekwondo game for many many years, starting in the in the mid to late seventies. Uh, he actually moved to Thailand, trained with the Thai fighters, and then uh, and then fought them and, and 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 won many, if not all, of his fights. Uh, and he told me uh, when I was questioning him about these spin kicks from watching his videos, watching him drop these guys with these spin kicks, he says they just don't quite, they don't quite get it. They don't quite understand it. They can't really defend against it, which is, which is good for us because if you don't train something, you can't defend it. The only way to learn to defend against something is to train it. That's why knife fighting, when we, I know I'm switching hearts on you a little bit, but knife fighting is so, uh, we do so much of it here because we want to get familiar with that blade because if you don't train it, uh, if somebody pulls a razor on you out there, it's, uh, it's lights out. So the spin heel kick, uh, I want you to develop the accuracy. I want you to develop the power. I'm going to slam some. I'm going to be using the clapper here. A mitt works good. The bad thing with a mitt, if you train a lot, you will start to hurt your uh, trade partner's arms. So I really like the clapper pad for the spin kick. So uh, I'm going to show you some of these. So remember, all of our kicks are essentially jumping kicks. Don't think of jumping kicks like in the movie where we jump eight foot in the air. It's a quick hop to alleviate, to, to eliminate the friction. Then once we land, we plant our feet. Then we push off of the ground. Okay. As you can see, the force behind that is uh, tremendous. Uh, now, the thing is to, to get more, you, you want to get high velocity. You want to spin as quick as you can. It's funny, I remember Master Bob Harding uh, when I was at Greenbelt. I was probably 11 years old. Um, he saw me having problems with this kick, and he said, what I want you to do, I want you to just throw your arm, keep it straight, just throw your arm as fast as you can behind you to get the, uh, to get the velocity, the momentum. And once you get that, you shorten your arm up and you just throw your elbow. Once you get that, you shorten everything up and you just use your hips. Okay? Very good lesson to learn at an early age. If you're having problems getting the velocity around, you should practice uh, that. All right. Grandmaster Bob Horton told me this when I was blue belt. This was some of the best advice I ever received. I was I was having a horrible time with spin a horrible time. And I my mind used to drop me off at school. I was like a, a, a martial art addict. Still it. Uh, but she would drop me off at school probably because she didn't want to, you know, she wanted them to babysit me. So she dropped me off at 4, then picked me up to 9.30 every night. This was my life. And even in the kids' program, I would just sit and watch the adult class. He let me in the adult program, uh, program at 11 because he saw that I was, he finally saw that I was determined. So at Blue Belt, I'll never forget, I wasn't, I wasn't getting it wrong fast enough. This is what he told me. And uh, Grandmaster Harden has one arm, really. His, his right arm is, uh, he had polio as a child. 
By the way, this is also his, his instructor also. So we, that's kind of how we met. We both started with the same guy, although he started decades before me, right? Um, so he told me, this is what he did. He says, what I want you to do right now, he picked up that little arm. He goes, I want you to swing that arm. Don't even worry about the other arm. He says, it's swing it as fast as you can. And he goes, and when you get good at that, short it up, just swing the elbow. When you get good at that, short it up, just swing the hip. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So, both velocity is important. When you learn to cheat the velocity, that's when you become, be able to pull it off. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, go. Also, when you throw the spinal kick, you'll have a tendency to want to, uh, the weight of the leg will tend to knock you off course. Like the, <laughs> showing my age again, the tops that we used to play with as, as kids when you spin it and they spin real straight. Well, once those tops start to do this, what do they do? They go, they started to roll off course. So uh, Master Brad Whitlow, uh, many, many years ago, I was probably 16 when he told me this, uh, he says you want to, once you kick, you want the kick to come down. Once you kick, you want the kick to come down and you want to bend your knees and settle right back at your starting point. You don't want to kick it back up. You don't want to quick kick and really uh, uh, fly off course. So if you watch my legs when I do this, I'm right back into where I was. Right back to the fin, right back in the pocket. Okay? Okay? This is spin heel kick. Okay, great way to set these spins up. I love throwing spins off of tie kicks. They don't expect it. And what's beautiful is, once you throw the tie kick on the way back, you're already, your momentum's already taking you in that direction. You might as well throw the kick. So, uh, as I said, we want to work on accuracy. So this is throwing the spin kick barely past his face. If I can hit his mustache, I will. Okay? So, you go to tie kick. Okay, we'll do it again. Uh, Mr. Jay is one of my greatest actors here that we tried, so he's a little role play for you guys. That was close. Let's try it again. Again. As I said, I like to spin off of the tie kick, so we'll show you that with the spin side kick this time. So I'm going to kick, and he's going to turn his shield, I'm going to spin side kick. Whoosh! 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 Spin side kick. Okay, as I said before, this is just a teaser for you guys. There is so much more in our hybrid kickboxing program. Uh, a bazillion drills. I'm just giving you guys some fun stuff you can practice. And then, uh, as I said before, we do a lot of private lessons here. If you guys are from other schools that want to work on kicking, maybe your school doesn't address that area uh, as much as you'd like. Or you just want to kind of refine your kicking. Uh, this is some great drills to do it with. So his hands are up. Okay. From here, same entry from the point here. I'm going to clinch from here. I'm going to make the knee from here, right? Now, this, this time when I rip him forward, I'm just going to throw the kick right by his face. Right, right towards his head. Okay? Now, obviously, I'm not ripping with the force I would really do. Okay? But uh, keep in mind, he, you, you at least get the idea. So, I go one, okay, hip out, two, see, rip him forward, boom, and there's the kick. Okay? Obviously, you could throw the spin side kick uh, with that also. Okay? As well as we've already talked about the, uh, the uh, turning. A round kick. Also, kicking. I love kicking off of, as I said before, off of my own combinations. Okay? Now, the kick that I prefer to do off of my own combinations is the turning round kick. So if I was to jab cross and he back up, there's the head shot from there. Okay? 
Now watch this one. If I jab, cross, hook, and he stays in the pocket. So I go one, two, three. There's the spin kick from there. So you can really start to play with these. Now the spin heel kick, I love throwing it off of his kicks or off of his strikes. So let's say he kicks and I shield. See? Once again, he kicks and I shield. As soon as I sit down, I can throw the straight, and then there's the spin heel kick right off the pocket. Again, I shield it. One. I just, I lean into the punch, whether it hits or not, it's just a setup. So I lean and press, there's the spin heel kick. Also, the spin side kick can come off a of hiss combination. So it goes one, two, right on pocket. As soon as I parry that punch, you okay? <laughs> Sorry, I was a little too much of liver. Liver is good for you. Okay, so slowly, one, I turn. As I turn the punch, it's already on target. Okay, and then that last uh, uh, theory here that I want you to do, or the last concept here, I should say, is once we're in the clinch, let's say I shove him away. There's the key because we're making him back up. Kicks for downs. Okay guys, uh, another great uh, training, uh, piece of training equipment, of course, is the, uh, the uh, mitts. Uh, obviously, you cannot put like the spin side kick in on the mitts uh, or, or, or stuff like that, but it works very good for the spin heel kick and for the uh, Muay Thai turning around kick. So I'm just going to play, have fun a little bit with some of the drills. As I keep saying, we have a thousand drills that get very in-depth. We have drills geared more towards the Muay Thai or the ring arena, uh, as well as we have drills geared, or kicking drills geared towards more of the, uh, the MMA side of the game, okay? So we're just going to have fun with some basic ones. Uh, first one, I'm going to come back with three. Okay, let's say he goes the jab cross this time. Okay, we can also work on uh, putting in the leg kick. Now, unless you have the uh, thigh pads where you can make some impact, uh, just have your partner turn and roll his muscle, kind of step forward on his foot a little bit and push this muscle into the kick. Uh, that way it kind of hides all the, the, the uh, spots that we would prefer to hit, but also it kind of prolongs your training, uh, uh, your, your training session. I'm going to break this down slow for you. He's going to uh, switch kick here. I'm going to shove here. See? And I'm going to let kick him from here. I'm going to come back to the pocket, throw my three punches, and then I can make my head kick. Okay, different angle. We'll do it slow again, and we'll try to speed it up for you a little bit here. So one, and two, three punches, and there's your head kick. Okay, we'll see how this comes out for you. So that's putting in the leg kick. Okay, we're moving right along into the uh, spin side kick. Uh, as I said, the spin side kick is your, uh, it's a uh, very ballistic kick. Uh, it's very hard to train it to, uh, to the fullest of its extent on anything other than a good uh, a good shield. Um, but you can get creative, and uh, I think that's what's uh, one thing, things that are great about modern day martial artists is that uh, you can learn to be creative with equipment, you can learn to be creative and borrow from other training methods. So as you see here, we blend it a little bit, we have a tie pad, this is uh, just will give me a, a little, little longer surface so I can land the spin sidekick without slipping off and hurting him. And we also have the mitt to really land some punches. 
uh, in combination. So we'll show you the first one we're going to do. Uh, he's going to uh, jab cross hook, and I'm going to shove with this one. As I cover this hook, I'm going to come back with a cross hook, and then I'm just going to come back with the leg tie kick and immediately slide into the spin side kick. Okay, so, so we're replacing, after the hook, we're replacing the cross for the uh, low-line uh, uh, turning kick, the low-line turning round kick. We'll do it again slow. One, two, three. Hush, hush, hush. There's the spin side kick right off of it. Different angle. Hush, 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 hush. Spin side kick. Okay. We'll kind of uh, do this a little quicker for you. Different angle. Spin side kick. Okay, the next way we uh, like to train the uh, spin side kick. The spin side kick is perfect to land on somebody that's moving, uh, moving into you. That's somebody that's moving forward. Um, so we do this drill a lot uh, with, with the mitts. Uh, if you have a chest protector or a belly pad, you can actually land this with a little more power. Um, but, but if you don't, I like to train it because it works on your control uh, and on your accuracy, okay? I like to just be able to put that heel where I want it, and uh, he knows that if I would have juiced it an inch or two more, he would have been on the ground. Uh, and you can, you can play with this and create your own. I mean, you can come up with your own, own drills from here. But he's gonna throw a uh, jab hook. I want to come back with two and one leg kick, and then I do I, I shuffle back. That makes him come get me, and I want to spin side kick as he steps forward. Okay, one more time. Slow. One, two, three, four, five. I step back. There's the spin side kick as he steps forward. We show a different angle. A little bit faster, trying not to hurt Mr. Jane here. That sucked. We'll try it again. step or whatever, she's going to uh, do a replacement step and the spin side kick is going to be off. She's going to throw the jab cross, and right underneath the cross, she's going to launch the uh, tie round kick or the turning round kick. And the retraction and the rotation of that turning round kick is going to launch the spin side kick right underneath it. Um, now, this is 
one of the things that's very unique to me. Now, other people do it. He does it. He don't even know he does it. He wants to do it for years. Let me ask a question. And I usually start class with this question. What is more powerful, a kick that's on the ground or a jump kick? What do you got? Who thinks a jump kick? Who thinks a kick that's on the ground? Very good. Yes, people think jump kicks because they see us demonstrated in demos and they see movies. But if, when we push off the earth, that's what makes fun. Does that make sense? It's like a car. If I get, if I get, I got a pretty fast little sports car. I don't care how fast it is. If I put it on a block of ice and I put a Pinto with a blown motor over here, and that thing's still going to be, you get what I'm saying? So we push off the earth when we kick. That adds power. Next question. What's faster, a jump kick or a kick that's on the ground? Because the same thing that gives us power, it also gives us friction. Friction slows us down. I do both. Every kick I do. Watch. So I'm here. When I land, I plant and I push. I plant and push. Every kick's a jump kick. But I plant when I don't kick. I, I'm not kicking air when I kick. I'm planting and pushing. Okay, now I'm going to show you a few ways to uh, plug in the spin hill kick uh, with the mitts. Uh, this is a real fun practice. Uh, and like I said, when you guys get in there and you start training these, you can come up with a bazillion ways to do these things. It's really fun. Part of the part of the fun of being a martial artist today uh, is the uh, the imagination and the uh, the way you cr create uh, create your own uh, training drills and etc. And I believe that's how you grow. Um, all right. So from here, he's going to throw the jab, which I catch it. Now he's going to throw the cross here, and I'm going to shuffle over. I'm going to get the body kick with the uh, round kick. Now, as I said, I don't like to throw uh, body round kicks as much because it does increase the chance of getting caught. But when he is committed into a punch, that's the best time to kick the body. Is when he's coming forward, when he's committed. Let's reiterate on a point I brought out earlier in this uh, video. The three times we kick a person in the middle of our own combinations, because our own combinations hide the kick. The second time we kick the person is as he's moving forward in the middle of his combinations. Or his legs off the ground, or his punchy and committed, bam, land a kick. And the third time we uh, kick the person is, is when he's moving backwards, when he's on his heels. That's when we kick the person. So, from here, he jabs, you step into it, there's a spin heel kick right on point. Uh, it, that, 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 that gut shot really hides it. Slow again. Push. Spin heel kick. We'll show a little faster speed for you. And again, different angle. Spin heel kick. Okay, we got one more for you uh, where we're plugging in the spin heel kick. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I didn't have any order uh, of these legs for you today. I'm just kind of picking some out of my mind. Uh, as I said, we have a bazillion of these. Uh, but I'm just kind of showing you some of the, uh, the uh, how diverse uh, these kicks can be and, and the ways you can plug them in uh, in the midst of uh, different combinations. So, Two. Okay, okay, watch. One. Still plug it in. He steps back. That's one. Does make sense? Sir, I crawl. I knee slide right to the sternum. As I sit down, I come back with two. I let kick. There's the spin heel kick. Huh? We'll do it again slow. Maybe a different angle. One, two. Maybe we'll try to do this one a little faster for you. Spin hill kick. Okay, uh... Another great drill that we like to do is a drill that we call kick the puncher, kicking the puncher. We also have punch the kicker, but that's for another video. Um, basically, he's going to come in, he's going to throw the jab, uh, he's got the jab, cross, hook, cross, he can throw it in any combination really. And I'm going to work, in, at first, uh, slow to middle speed is perfect for this drill. Uh, when we're not wearing proper equipment, good thick shin pads, 
uh, uh, he, the, the trainer should have a, a, a belly pad or a chest protector on. When, we're not, when we don't have that stuff, work on your accuracy, work on your control, work on getting your kicks off. Um, right now I'm going to show you the, uh, the, uh, how, to, how to insert the leg kick. We're going to do a few for you, see how it comes out. So, Getting the round kickoff. And once again, just playing around, going slow, uh, just giving you guys some ideas. I'm going to try to incorporate the, uh, the uh, hit kick now. Uh, same principle. Head kick. That's a spit hook hit one. Okay, moving right along. Now let's show you how to plug in the uh, spin side kick. Uh, as I said before, I love catching the guy as he's moving in with the spin side kick. So we'll do this slow just so you can get the, the, the training down. I love throwing it on the cross. So he throws a jab, cross, and I almost do like an inner, like a you know traditional karate inner forearm block here. Uh, almost, I'm just swatting that thing to the side, and the liver is just right open. For So he can also throw the jab cross, hook, see, from here, now from here I can punch, hook, he step back, there's the side kick. Okay, it's hard to do this one kind of full speed, obviously. Jab cross hook, hook, there's the elbow, there's the shove, there's the side kick. See how he's catching it on his arm, and I'll show you one. Okay, jab cross hook. See? That's the cross hook. There's the leg kick here. Spin side kick. Just some uh, some uh, ideas for you there. Okay, uh, and, and last we're going to throw in the spin hook kick. Be very very careful with this. Uh, I highly recommend that you put the spin hook kick through lots of accuracy uh, training. Uh, we'll show you a few fun ones here. You can hold it, be pin top, and work kicking out somebody's hand way before you dry their mouth. By the way, um, uh, hitting mitts. Uh, is great. Clapper pads great. Uh, when you work with a partner, you have to have that control to go past his face. Your partner may also, you know, give him time to get prepared for it, so he can kind of uh, sway back a little bit on that spin hook kick. So, okay, uh, adding in the spin hook kick now. Let's do some uh, some leg defenses. Uh, from here, he's going to kick. I'm going to shield that. I like to come with the punch, even if it doesn't uh, land. It's just another distraction in his face. So from here, I shield it, I punch, there's a spin heel kicker right off the punch. Okay, we'll do it again. Okay, we'll do it again. Spin heel kick, get the angle. Okay, another uh, variable you can do is off the rear leg kick. See so here, okay. now I like to kick the leg. The spin hook kick is right off of it. Okay. Okay. One. Kick the leg. <clears throat> and the spin hook kick is right off of it. So there's another variable for you. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us on this uh, quick instructional. Uh, I keep wanting to reiterate with you guys, uh, kicking is the lost art. I um, mean, as I said, this isn't, this isn't going to be a uh, definitive video for you guys by any means. We do a lot more, uh, it's a lot more to our kicking program than this. 
But I just wanted to show you how valuable kicking can really be. And if you train it right, uh, you, you will have a very complete arsenal. Okay? Um, flexibility, yes, is important. That's what we hear a lot. Oh, I'm just not flexible enough to do all the kicking. Well, stretch more. Train more. Nobody is flexible at first. Um, but the more, you, the more you train this, the more you stretch, you will, uh, you will start to love kicking. One of the things that, that, one of the reasons why people neglect kicking is because of the discipline that's required. It's, 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 probably, it's probably the hardest art form you can do. It requires lots of repetition. Lots of repetition. Repetition breeds habit. Repetition is the mother of skill. So the more you kick, the more you train this, the more better you will be. Or more better, as we say here. Um, once you develop powerful kicking, I'm telling you, you'll be a force to reckon with. So, uh, as I said, I do a lot of private tr uh, lessons here. Uh, if you guys want to work on kicking with me, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always here. So uh, just uh, contact me at the, uh, the uh, contact numbers uh, website below. Uh, with that said, uh, we want to thank Mr. Jay Buppas. I know he's uh, going to be a little sore after all that. Uh, by the way, you didn't see the thousands of repetitions we did uh, for you to get this little short video here. So, uh, so he took a lot of abuse. Uh, we want to thank uh, Mr. Jay. Uh, uh, I guess with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Kicks for downs. Uh, I'll see you on the mat. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Another episode. Another segment. Another segment. Well, delete that. We're talking. You ready? Hello guys. Welcome to another segment of On the Mat. Who wrote Billy Brown here? Today, we're going to bring... This <laughs> 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 one. <laughs> It wouldn't go down. That's what she said. <laughs> what kind of mustache? He has a Hitler mustache. Right? Look at this. Look at it. Look at the video. Half Hitler, Hitler, half biker, and he's Olive. <laughs> That's just all kinds of wrong. <laughs> okay, guys. Today, uh, assisting me, we have Mr. Jay Bumpus. Uh, Jay has been with me for about three years. He's in my instructor program. Uh, we always love uh, having Jay in these videos so we can beat on. And Miss Elise is laughing and shaking the film, so we're going to redo this. <laughs> See how many men I've dropped uh, uh, sparring with this. Uh, my uh, my time in the ring um, with this. I've never landed it in the street, but uh, you know that that's another story about this. Movie. That's a that's a muffler out there. Mufflers are very effective in street <laughs> fights. They, they blind you with the carbon mon monoxide. And, uh, and you just can't see, and then you can do all the spin kicks you want to do. Mufflers. Okay, the first kick we're going to show you, I want you guys to step back and do a great low block like this. This is blocking a really hard Muay Thai row kick to your thigh. It works perfectly every time. And then what I want you to do is front kick his testicles like this. But you've got to point the hand at his face because of technique. Because technique always leads to knockdowns. So when you low block that hard rail, that hard tie rail kick, point this head to his face, hmm, front kick, and you got to key eye. Because if you don't key eye, you don't scare the opponent. By scaring the opponent, it makes him unaware that he's getting kicked in the testicles. So, key eye! Ah! That's the first kick we're going to show you. Kicks for downs. 